Hello, everyone. My name is Henry Wang, and I'm a PhD student at MIT working on quantum computer architecture and machine learning. I'm very glad to introduce our HPC 2022 work on quantum NAS noise adaptive search for robust quantum circuits. Here is the outline of my talk, which contains six sections. And I will start with a quick overview of the quantum NAS framework. Current quantum circuits are noisy. For parameterized quantum circuit, more gates can bring higher capacity, but also introduce more noise. Therefore, we need to search for noise robust circuits architecture. For the naive search, we have to train each candidate circuit individually and then select the best one. That incurs significant search cost. For quantum NAS, we propose to train all candidate circuits at once by training a super circuit, amortizing the training cost. We also propose iterative quantum gate pruning. Since gates with small parameters have small impact on the results, we can iteratively prune the small gates and then fine tune the remaining ones to recover accuracy. That's the quick overview of the techniques we proposed. As for background, we know that we are in the noisy intermediate scale quantum or the NISC era. Noisy here means the qubits are sensitive to the perturbations from the environment and the quantum gate's fidelity is low. For the example of IBM Q devices, the error are around one to the power of minus two to minus three. Intermediate scale means we have limited number of qubits in the scale of tens or hundreds. Recently, parameterized quantum circuit is a research focus for applications on NISC devices. They contain fixed gates such as CX and X and also parameterized gates such as rotation and controlled rotation gates. They are commonly used in the hybrid classical quantum models such as variational quantum again solver VQE, quantum neural networks QNN, and the quantum approximate optimization algorithm QAOA. However, PQC has two major challenges. Firstly, the quantum noise degrades the PQC reliability. The figure below shows the MNIS4 image classification accuracy using QNN with different number of parameters. We find that more parameters can increase the noise-free accuracy in green, but may degrade the, the measured accuracy in yellow. Also, under the same number of parameters, the measured accuracy of different circuit architecture, or called ANSAs, varies a lot. Therefore, it is critical to design noise-robust circuit architecture. Another challenge is the large design space of PQCs. For example, we can select different types of gates, such as U3 and CU3, or X and CZ gates. We can also choose different number of gates. Even with the same number of gates, the positions of the gates can be very diverse, so the design space is huge. To solve these two challenges, we propose the quantum NAS framework. The goal of quantum NAS is to automatically and efficiently search for noise robust quantum circuits. The automatic and efficient search is achieved by the super circuit, which is trained for, for once, but used for many sub circuit candidates. The noise robustness is achieved by involving the quantum noise feedback in the search loop and co searching the circuit architecture and qubit mapping. Intuitively, quantum NAS decouples the training and search processes. On the left-hand side, we have three for loops, the first one for the quantum devices, second for the search episodes, and third one for the parameter updating. Because the training process is nested in the inner loop, the overall cost is very large. Instead, in the quantum NAS, we decouple the training and search process by only performing the expensive parameter updates for once and use it to do the lightweight evaluation of circuit architecture candidates for many times. Therefore, the search cost is significantly reduced. Here we show the four steps of quantum NAS. The first one is super circuit construction and training. We firstly need to have a predefined design space. For example, we can have a design space with four U3 gates in the first layer and four CU3 gates in the second layer. So the design space contains two to the power of eight, which is 256 candidates. If we train each of them with classical simulator on one NVIDIA GPU, that will take around 100 hours, which is very costly. Therefore, we want to enable efficient search with the help of a super circuit. 
The super circuit is the circuit with the largest number of gates in the design space. Here is the example of the super circuit in the U3 plus U3 design space, which contains eight gates. Sub circuit is a subset of the super circuit gates. Here we show three examples of the sub circuits. The first one contains gate two and gate three in the first layer and gate five, six, eight in the second layer. The reason why we use a super circuit is because it enables efficient search of circuit architecture candidates with no need of training each of them individually. Specifically, for one sub circuit candidates in the design space, we can directly inherit the parameters from super circuit and consider that the sub circuit can operate as if it is trained individually from scratch. Since all sub circuits share the parameters of the super circuit, we need to prevent the interference of sub circuit from each other. Therefore, we perform super circuit training by iteratively sampling and updating the sub circuit. In one step, we use from sampling and restricted sampling to sample a sub circuit candidate and use it to do inference and update its parameters. Parameter updates are cumulative across the steps. For the super circuit, we can stack multiple blocks like this to enable a larger number of gates and capacity. During the sampling, we first sample total number of blocks and then sample gates within each block. From sampling here means we only sample the front several blocks and the front several gates. For example, if we sample two gates in the first layer, then they will be gate one and gate two. If we sample only one gate in one layer, then that will be gate one. We also propose restricted sampling. We restrict the difference between sub circuit of two consecutive steps. For example, here, we set the maximum different layers to be four. And then if we sample a circuit with five different layers as shown at the top, we will discard it and resample. If the circuit has three different layers, we can use it, such as the one at the bottom. For the next step, in this example, only two layers are different, so it is also a valid sub-circuit. With the front sampling and restricted sampling, we can perform sub-circuit sampling and parameter training for many steps. With the front sampling and restricted sampling, we can perform sub-circuit sampling and parameter training for many steps like this. Here we show the reliability of the super circuit. The x-axis is sub-circuit performance with inherited parameters from super circuit. The y-axis is sub-circuit performance trained from scratch. We can see a clear positive correlation between them with a Spearman correlation score around 0.8. So the inherited parameters are reliable enough to indicate the final performance. Then we obtain the trained super circuit and enter the next step. We can use the super circuit to perform efficient noise adaptive search of the sub circuit architecture and could be mapping on target devices such as the IBMQ York Sound machine. We use the evolution search as the optimization engine. In one iteration, it generates sub circuit architecture and could be mapping pairs. Those pairs are then evaluated. The parameters are inherited from super circuit with no need for training. Then the performance is simulated with noise model or directly run on the real quantum devices. The noise information is actually involved in this evaluation process. The performance is then sent back to the evolutionary search engine and the pairs with high performance are selected as parents and the new population is generated by mutation and crossover. For mutation, we directly altered the architecture of several layers with a probability. For crossover, we select two parents and generate new sub-circuit by assembling part of the circuit architecture of two parents. After multiple iterations, we can obtain the search sub-circuit architecture and qubit mapping. So we can train the sub-circuit from scratch. Then we can further perform the iterative quantum gate pruning on the trained sub-circuit. Specifically, 
then some gates contain parameters very close to zero. They have small impact to the results. Therefore, we can iteratively prune small magnitude gates and fine tune the remaining gates parameters like this. Through fine tuning, the noise free accuracy can be recovered. Since fewer gates bring less noise, the measure accuracy on real quantum device can be improved. Then we go to the evaluation section. For benchmarks, we use classification tasks for quantum machine learning, including MNIST, Fashion MNIST, and Vogue. For VQE, we use five molecules. We run the experiments on IBM Q devices with 5 to 65 qubits and 8 to 128 quantum volume. Quantum neural networks benchmark are used to perform classification tasks. For example, we can use rotation gates to encode classical pixels to quantum states. Then trainable quantum layers can be trained according to the task. The measurement obtains classical outputs from quantum states and final softmax outputs classification probabilities. The variational quantum eigensolver finds the ground state energy of the molecule Hamiltonian. The PQC here are used to prepare the quantum states and the measurement basis are obtained according to the target molecule. Firstly, here, the figure shows the number of parameters versus the measured accuracy of MNIST for classification on the IBM Q Yorktown machine. The baselines are human design and evolutionary search with no noise information. We can see that Quantum NAS delays the accuracy peak, enables more circuit parameters. Therefore, under the same number of parameters, quantum NAS can bring up to 38% of accuracy boost. Here, we also show the detailed circuit property for MNIST 2 task. We can see again that more parameters and gates do not necessarily bring better accuracy. Quantum NAS search circuit here has fewer parameters but higher accuracy. Here is the comparisons for four design spaces using different kinds of gates. Those four design spaces are U3 plus C U3 gates, ZZ plus RY gates, RX, RY, RZ gates, and ZX plus XS gates. We can see that quantum NAS in red can achieve consistently improvements on the diverse design space over the baseline. Here are the results of the VQE on hydrogen molecule. You can see that quantum loss in red is very close to the optimal value, which is minus 1.85. And it is much more closer than the baselines such as UCCSD. We also experiment quantum loss on different quantum devices. Here we try different five qubit devices. Bilem, Quito, Essence, and San Diego. And accuracy here are the average accuracy for five different tasks. We can see that on those four different devices, quantum NAS can outperform several baselines by a very large margin. On the challenging 10 classification tasks, the baseline can only provide less than 50% accuracy, which is only 5% higher than the random guess while the quantum NAS can improve the accuracy to 32%. We also show the individual effect of the quantum gate pruning on the MNIST 4 task on the IBM Q Yorktown machine. The pruning technique can improve the accuracy for diverse design spaces by 3% on average. The reason for that is after fine tuning, the noise-free accuracy of the prune circuit is very close to the original one. Well, the number of gates in the prune circuit is fewer than the original one, so the noise sources is reduced. We also perform ablation study of only performing noise adaptive search for architecture or only performing noise adaptive search for qubit mapping. The results here show that the code search of architecture and qubit mapping can provide the best accuracy than only search one of them. The table here shows time cost of each step on one NVIDIA GPU. We also compare the search cost of naive search with the quantum NAS. We can see that with the quantum NAS method, we can reduce the search cost from over 800 GPU hours to only 4.5 GPU hours. We want to emphasize that 
the whole pipeline of quantum mass can be performed on the real quantum machine. The super circuit and sub circuit training can be done with parameter shift. Okay, next we are going to introduce our open source library called Torch Quantum. The library aims to facilitate the interdisciplinary research of quantum computing and machine learning. On one direction, we aim to achieve faster and high accuracy machine learning using the quantum computers. So we support different quantum machine learning models such as quantum neural networks and quantum kernel method. On another direction, we also provide examples of using machine learning to optimize quantum system problems, such as compilation. In terms of the features of Torch Quantum, it supports easy construction of parameterized quantum circuits, such as QNN in PyTorch. It also supports batch mode inference and training on GPUs and, and CPUs with high parallelism. It also supports easy deployment on real quantum devices, such as IBM Q devices. We provide tutorials, videos, and example projects of quantum machine learning and using machine learning to optimize quantum computer system problems. The tutorials contain collab and videos to explain all the details of the implementations and, and are very easy to follow. Finally, as conclusion, quantum NAS exploits super circuit based co search for the most noise or bus circuit architecture and qubit mapping. It proposed iterative quantum gate pruning to further remove the redundant gates. It improves MNIST 2 class classification accuracy from 88% to 95%, and 10 class accuracy from 15% to 32%. It saves the search cost by over 1,000 times over the baseline naive search. We also open source the Torch Quantum Library for the research in the area of quantum computing and machine learning. Thank you for watching and for more details, welcome to visit our website at qmlsys.mit.edu. Thank you.